So welcome back for the lecture four of this week. So in the last lecture we discussed how do you uh, bootstrap your opinion sentiment lexicons from using some simple seed sets from uh, your corpus and from your word net. Okay. So so in this lecture what we will see so we will see two things mainly. Suppose you have your uh, sentiment lexicons and you can use that directly to uh, to find out the sentiment score of your different sentences and all in your data. So, there are very standard uh, methods for doing that you can take an average and all, but what are certain things that you have to keep in mind that is what we will talk about. And then from the different data sets where you see abundance of sentiments like review data set over movies and all, what are the nice trends you see about different words and what are, so what kind of measure do you have you should use to be able to see those trends also to be able to find out what words are getting, what words are more prominent with positive and negative emotions in those. So, so let us see, suppose I want to learn what is the sentiment score of a word by seeing how, how often does, does that occur in a review corpus. Okay. So, I take some corpus from online corpus say IMDB, I take all the reviews from, from different movies. And now, now I want to see how, how often or how much correlated a particular word is with a particular rating score. So, how do I do that? So, I can start with any review data sets. So, here are some examples you can take for movies, you can take IMDb, you want to take reviews for books, you can take Goodreads, you, you want to take uh, reviews for hotels and all, you can take TripAdvisor, and for various products, you can take Amazon or other, other websites. Now, on different of different of uh, pages you will find different ratings somewhere you will find 1 to 5 somewhere you will find 1 to 10 etcetera. Okay. And now I want to find out how often a word occurs in a particular uh, sentiment class or particular rating class. So, how, what kind of what can be a good measure for, for doing that. So, let us see. Okay. So, we are taking the example from, from IMDB and I want to find out I want to analyze polarity of each word in IMDB. So, that is how often does that occur with different different ratings. So, what will be the simplest measure that will come to your mind? Okay, you can say okay, I have ratings from 1 to 10 and I want to find out how often this word occurs with each of the rating 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and so on and I can do like that. Okay, so, let us count the word bad in 1 star, 2 star, 3 star etcetera. So, on x axis you can see different ratings 1 to 10 and on y axis you can see the count how many times a word occurs. So, this can be approach that can give you how many what are the counts of a word, but this will not help you in in finding out some sort of uh, seeing a some sort of normalized picture. So, for example, does this word occur in one rating more with more probability than others other ratings. So, how what would be a criteria? So, you want to see that okay it might happen that in my in my corpus there are more reviews with rating 1 than rating 5. So, so by that simple uh, statistics the count of this word in 1 will be higher than count in 5. So, I should be able to do some normalization. So, first normalization I can do is what is the count of the word in a particular rating divide by count of all the words in that rating. Okay. So, some sort of probability of word in a particular rating that can be the first measure that I can take. So, what is the probability of a word given a particular rating? So, we see is noting a rating and that you can obtain by seeing the number of times the word occurs with that rating divide by all the words that occur in that rating whatever times or you can say this is the size of that rating how many different words occur there. So, this will give you the probability of the word occurring in that rating. So, this can help you normalize across the ratings. Okay. So, what is the probability of this word in rating 1, rating 2, rating 3 and you can see okay, it does it have a higher probability in rating 1 and so on. But suppose now you want to compare across words. Okay. So, this is okay for comparing across the ratings, but if you want to compare across words this may not be a good measure and why is that? Because it might again happen that this word is very very common in, in lexicon. So, that means the probability of this word is actually very high. So, by that logic again the probability of this word occurring with this uh, review might this rating might also be high. 
So, I want to do another normalization that takes into account what is the probability of this word. So, what can be an alternative measure? So, I already have probability of the word given this class. Okay. See, here is the particular rating class. Now, I can divide it by the probability of the word itself and that will be a normalized measure. Okay. So, now it will be it, it will be comparable across different words. So, I am saying what is the probability of the word in the corpus divide in the in the particular rating divide by what is the probability of word overall. Okay. So, you, you can also think it like okay, how much the, does that depart from its actual probability. Okay. If this is very different from its actual probability that means yes there is a very uh, very it is a nice uh, indicative of a particular class. So, so, this is called likelihood and this together is called a scaled likelihood. Okay, so, we, we will be trying to compare words across categories and different words by using their scaled likelihood. Uh, so, how, how do they occur in different ratings with this scaled likelihood. Okay. So, by that I am making them comparable across words by taking probability word given the class divided by probability word. Now, let us take some example from IMDB data set. So, what we are seeing on x axis we have different ratings 1 to 10 and on y axis we have the scaled likelihood okay. and it is a scale. So, it will not go beyond 1. So, it has to be between 0 to 1. So, so what are you seeing here? So, let us see the first column positive good and negative good. So, what we are seeing as you go from rating 1 to 7 positive good is increasing. So, that means, we are talking good without a negation it is increasing, but when you go from 7 to 10 it is decreasing. Negative good it is high initially and then it is decreasing. Okay. So, now do it, can you make sense of that? So, when you are going to higher reviews initially good is increasing and then it is decreasing and this is actually this might be the case why because yes when you go to from in review of rating 1 you might not have much good written, but then you go to higher review yes there is good, but when you go to even higher reviews you might not be using a word like good you might be using a better adjective like amazing okay, and, and, and so on fantastic. So, you are using uh, adjectives like that. So, that is what you will see in the in the next column. So, you take a adjective like amazing and you will see okay, in, in reviews 1 to 5 it is nearly very low 0.05 and then it starts shooting up and it goes to 0.28 in the in the reviews of rating 10. That means, the word amazing occurs a lot in the reviews of rating 10 by the scale likelihood and this gives a nice picture. Now, we are talking about negative good that was ok. So, it was uh, decreasing it was the scale was decreasing as you go from high reviews. So, in review of 10 there would not be much occurrence of not good, but now if you talk about terrible. So, or depressing. So, you have the word depressing, depressed or depressing. So, you see that initially in rating 1 it was occurring with uh, a high likelihood, a scale likelihood and as you go down it keeps on decreasing. So, again this looks this pattern looks interesting. Then you see the word like great, okay, it is not, not as steep as amazing, but again this is nice trend. It starts increasing from 1 to 10, from 0 0.05 it goes up to 0.17 bad similarly it starts from 0 0.21 very high likelihood or in rating 1 it goes up to 0 0.04 as you go to rating 10. And similarly if you see awesome and terrible they have similar trends as amazing. So, awesome is very similar to amazing yes occurs a lot in rating 10 you see the numbers are also nearly same 0 0.28 0 0.27 and terrible is so terrible is like very very high in rating 1 0 0.28 and goes to 0 0.03 at rating 10. So, this is how you can now compare different words that how how likely do they occur with reviews of rating 1, 2 and 10 and you can try to compare which words behave in a very similar manner. And you might even be able to use this method to find out by using a review corpus which words are actually positive, which words are negative. Okay. So, you can use it for the task that we discussed in the last lecture also. Now, so, yeah, so you can see some other trends also. So, how often, so, so negation is a big problem. So, so is it that whenever you have negation in the in the sentence, does it always convey, convey a negative sentiment? 
okay so is negative lo is logical negation associated with the negative sentiment so potts had this experiment where they found out how many times negation like not no never were occurring in online reviews and then they were trying to see its occurrence with the review ratings okay so how often do they occur with different review ratings again they did, did took the scaled likelihood for imdb and five star reviews and they found a very uh, i will say intuitive trend here that in review of uh, rating 1 it had a very high scaled likelihood 0.12 and as you go down up to 10 it had a 0.08 was not as was difference as you were seeing in terrible or awesome but you can still say that the negation is occurring more in the uh, reviews with uh, rating 1 than revision rating 10 and same thing they saw with other reviews that, that were on five star rating so it was occurring with 0.26 uh, likelihood with review 1 review of rating 1 and a likelihood of 0.13 with the review of rating 5 so so now suppose i want to use this lexicon i have a sentiment lexicon i want to find use that to find out what is the sentiment score of a uh, sentence in or a paragraph in my corpus so this will help i can just take the the sentiment score of each of the words that is a very uh, simple based on algorithm you you find out the sentiment of each word add take an average things like that okay and that will give you a score to the whole uh, sentence but so so what we are what i'm trying to show here is that if you use some linguistic intuitions on top of that that might give you a better result okay so for example one particular problem with these is negation okay so so what do i do i have in my lexicon word like terrible and yeah word like good i know terrible is very bad it's like minus 5 and good is say plus 3 if i get a negation here not terrible not good what do i do do i add the polarity of not with polarity of terrible similarly polarity of not with good that will not be a good uh, approach so i should understand that these are some sort of function words they have some certain functions so can i take take it as a function over this okay a function over this a simple function that you can think is Okay, just reverse the polarity. Whenever there is not, reverse the polarity. Terrible is minus five. Not terrible becomes plus five. But is that a good approach? So that we will see. Secondly, there are some other words that are also like function words. So you can say, okay, so very word like very. So you say good has some polarity. Now you attach very to that. Very good. What will be the polarity? And some words can be okay. Some what? So that. So then, what will the polarity? Some what good? so good has some polarity how do you give a polarity to some word good okay so so like that you can use some linguistic intuitions to make much to make much more sense from your lexicon and avoid doing some some mistakes with uh, all these different function words so so you can use some linguistic intuitions on top and that can give you some better results so let us see so i have these words like excellent with plus 5 good plus good with plus 3 terrible with minus 5 and bad with minus 3 okay so one as we said one simple thing you can do is when you have negation is that you just can just reverse the polarity so if you reverse the polarity that's what you get not excellent minus 5 not good minus 3 not terrible plus 5 and not bad plus 3 now just have a look at that for a second and see if if that makes sense okay so we are saying not excellent is minus 5 and not good is minus 3 okay so just think about it when i say excellent i mean this really really good when i say not excellent does do i mean like terrible if i say not excellent that means okay it's not excellent but it it is good right it is good but not excellent so if i have to say it is it is not good i will say not good so not excellent means something in the positive polarity so so completely reversing the polarity will not be a good idea here so changing it from plus plus 5 to minus 5 will actually be a mistake similarly so not good is okay but again you what you are doing not good is getting a better score than not excellent that's again not ideal you want to give a lower score to not good 
than not excellent. Same thing you can think about with the other two words. So you have not bad. Not bad can mean okay something that is going towards good. But when you say not terrible, you also you still mean that it's bad. So not terrible should have a bad should have a negative score and much less than not bad. But it's happening the reverse here. So you see not terrible is getting a higher score than not bad. This is not ideal. So instead of just reversing the polarity, we can do something else, and this is called you do something like a polarity shifting. So if it is minus five, you shift the polarity. So you add say plus four to that. So terrible is minus five. Add plus four, you get minus one. Not terrible minus five minus one is okay. Not you do the same to not bad. So not bad will be minus three for bad. Plus four is equal to one. So not bad starts getting good. Okay, so you are getting a positive sense, uh, polarity. Same thing you do with excellent. Excellent is five, and you say not excellent. Shift polarity shifter. So you say five minus four. Okay, here here you you were doing plus four. Here you are doing minus four. This is just a number. You can change this, and this will give you one. So still having a positive score, and not good. Good has three. You shift the polarity, you get minus one. You get a negative polarity, and that would be a much better approach than simply reversing the polarity. So this is like linguistic intuition that you can use. Okay, so use a polarity shifter and something like that. Some five minus four gives you plus one, three minus four gives you minus one, and you can see not good has a more negative sentiment than not excellent. Okay, same you can see with not terrible and not bad. Similarly, how do you handle? Various intensifiers like very, somewhat, etc. So, what do you see here? So, you can have some amplifiers that can increase the intensity, okay? And then there are certain down toners like slightly that can decrease it. So, so what do I want to do? Suppose you know the polarity for good, okay? You know the score for good. Now, if it occurs with somewhat, somewhat good. Suppose it is three. You want to reduce this, right? Somewhat good, so you want to take from three to say two. On the other hand, if it occurs with say very good or really good, so you want to increase that. So say okay, three point five. It was in this three. You can say okay, very good might be three point five. So again, these are acting like some function words that can act as a function to modify your sentiment score of the main word. So again, in linguistics, you can you can find out some some words. So in a paper. So they had given some scores like slightly you do minus fifty percent, somewhat you do minus thirty percent, pretty minus ten percent, really plus fifteen percent. So they are now amplifiers where each plus twenty five, extraordinarily plus fifty, and the most becomes plus hundred. So you make these modifiers, and how do you do computations? So suppose you have a uh, sentence like this, somewhat sleazy. So sleazy is minus three. So when you do somewhat sleazy, you say okay. So what is the score of sleazy? Uh, sorry, somewhat minus thirty percent. So you say okay, minus three, hundred percent, minus thirty percent. So that will give you minus three into point seven. It will give you minus two point one. Like that, you can give a, a score with these down toners or amplifiers. So this is again some linguistic intuition that can be used. Then. So, so many times you have to be careful with the specific sentences. Okay, so like if people are using some irrealist mood. Okay, so like like I thought this movie would be as good as the Grinch, but unfortunately it wasn't. So so here the author is saying I thought this movie would be as good as the Grinch. Okay, so although there is just some positive words, this is a irrealist mood. So you are saying the I thought that this would happen, but this didn't happen. So this is again. So here you cannot just rely on your sentiment. Ah, uh, scores that are given in your lexicon. Similarly, you see a sentence like this: "This should have been a great movie, right?" Again, if you just use your sentiment lexicon, you will say it is a positive polarity. But this is again a realist mood, and you cannot uh, rely on the words directly. So you should have some way of finding out a realist mood. I will either probably change my polarity or I use some something else. So specifically, you can you need to be careful about using conditional mark markers. Okay. If that was the case, then this would have been good, and so on. Then something like any or anything, certain intentional verbs like I expected, I I doubt, 
whenever this occurs you might not rely on what follows okay similarly if there are questions in the sentence then also you should not be able to fully rely on the words and then this is important many times when you do this sentiment analysis over the corpus like news corpus so what do you see you will find various quotes so he said something so now you cannot assign a sentiment to a sentence by whatever is there in the in the quotes okay because he just uh, reporting some other sentiment but actually the 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 author did not have any sentiment okay so you are reporting some sentiment so if you want to find out the sentiment of the sentence it does not have any sentence so you should not use the sentiment of the quotes to give the sentiment of the sentence okay so the quotes also you should have to be careful with so christopher fort parts has a very nice sentiment tutorial so you can just search for sentiment tutorial by christopher parts and there you can also try different sentences and see how how the tokenization is done so like it sounds like a great plot but cannot hold up so you see the negation is coming up with hold and up also and further it tells you how different lexicons try to assign a score to this so you will see how sentivernet deals with it how opinion lexicon deals with it how M imdb deals with it and so on so you see in sentivernet for different words you find out what whether they are positive polarity or negative polarity okay so you can directly find out by using this tutorial website so and there are many other resources that will be helpful for you in on that website itself so so that was about this lecture that how do you uh, compute with the affected lexicons what kind of nice trends you can see about the words occurring in the uh, review data sets so we will so we will end this uh, week and also the course in the next lecture so we will uh, so we will take one other application so we will just try to give a hints on on and what is the aspect based sentiment analysis so till now what we are doing we are giving a score to the sentence okay this is a positive or negative sentiment but suppose uh, it is not like the whole i am saying positive about the whole hotel as such okay i am writing a hotel review i may not be saying positive about the hotel or negative about the hotel i might be saying about certain aspects of that okay maybe the service was good okay but the room maybe the the food quality was good but the room was dirty so i might be saying some positive about one aspect but negative about the another aspect so is there some simple methods of capturing those that's what we will see in the next lecture thank you